I don't want to take up too much of your time because I really want to hear from Grace and Jenny. But just to introduce myself, I'm Tad Wamister. I'm Director of Partnership Development at Engine. I've been a part of this team for uh, and doing this work for over five years now. Um, and I am an adult educator by training. I'm a big fan of using technology and, and building blended programs. And I've got a lot of experience working with internationally trained professionals from my many years at Upwardly Global. Why is this so important, um, the topic of immigrant and refugee workforce inclusion? Well, uh, these individuals are significant portions of our workforce, and this is a growing population. Adult English learners represent one in 10 working age adults in the US. So it's very important to the you know, vibrancy and success of our economic success of our communities to be helping these individuals to fill in demand, you know, good quality jobs in the US. Um, this is a Migration Policy Institute, in, Institute stat that we're only reaching about 4% of adult English language learners because of wait lists and, um, you know, transportation barriers and work schedules. So it's really important to think about innovative blended program models. You know, we have a trend of increasing percentages of um, immigrants and refugees in our workforce. It's estimated that 97% of workforce growth by 2030 will be immigrants and the children of immigrants. This population is making huge contributions to the US economy. However, workforce and English skills are the number one barrier to inclusion and access. Um, Every state that I go to right now is talking about reskilling, upskilling, you know, increasing the percentage of individuals who've earned post-secondary credentials and degrees in their state. Um, but too often, we're not thinking about the needs of our multilingual workforce. Um, and that's really why we hosted this PD series that we're going to talk about and why we're so proud of partnerships with organizations like Advance and like Emily Griffith Technical College that is doing this work and innovating. This, is, this image really helps to illustrate what we're trying to do at Engine. We wanna be a bridge from uh, traditional or general English language learning over to workforce development programs, apprenticeships, IETs, and CTE opportunities. And we use vocational or, you know, vocational English language learning, English for specific purposes to accelerate that journey and close the gap. We're also seeing um, new models emerging for workplace English language learning. And these are some of the um, important elements to think about. You know, coaching and ongoing support is very important. Uh, these earn and learn models where people can start, you know, in a frontline worker an entry level job but over the course of their career and their career pathway, they can be building up workforce skills, earning industry recognized credentials, taking uh, or filling harder to fill jobs, um, and achieving, um, you know, uh, achieving uh, family sustaining wages. We are seeing an ecosystem of organizations that are doing this work, including employers, community colleges, and adult education programs, as well as state and local governments, uh, whether that be the Department of Education, uh, labor, and other talent development initiatives. Just to step back before I pass it over, well, what is Engine, and why are we sponsoring this session? Well, Engine, you know, our mission is to remove English as a barrier. We want to unlock economic and workforce opportunities for immigrants, refugees, and multilingual learners. But we're always working with another organization, whether that's an adult education program, a community college, um, an employer, or a workforce organization. But what the learners get, and this is very unique, is a highly personalized experience because the platform adapts based on native language, career goals, interest areas, and performance. We also have a growing career pathway catalog. We're always adding new pathways. Uh, for example, we added a series of CASAS prep courses that can help uh, people have access and qualify for workforce development programs. We're adding in-demand pathways like 
uh, English for heat pump installation and HVAC, uh, electrical line installation, veterinary technicians, auto mechanics. These are just some of the pathways that we've added in the last few months. And of course, for any program that's using the tool, you can see what your learners are doing. You can see their time on task and the lessons, units, and courses that are being completed. So it can be used for a vocational transition to assess if a learner is ready and to set them up for success. Um, I wanna mention that we did an in-depth professional development series this September that was focused on using Engine to create pathways to short-term credentials. I'm proud that we had participants from Advance and from Emily Griffith Technical College um, and many leading adult education programs from across the country. I wanted to share a little bit about this first uh, series that we've done, but also to set, uh, to set up uh, 2025 because we want more organizations to be joining in this work. Um, so for the September series, we had 233 reg registrations across 50 organizations, um, 125 participants attended at least one of the live trainings, um, about a core group of 50 completed the series, um, and we have many more who uh, viewed the session recordings. I am going to put in the chat this link so that if you're interested in signing up for the next series, you can do so, because we want to see more transitions to IETs, apprenticeships, um, successfully building workplace literacy programs that integrate education and training, and building supports for internationally trained professionals. Um, I just want to share four ingredients or building blocks for success. We need a champion. We need someone who cares. We need appropriate content that uh, delivers those industry and career skills. Um, this is It's important that this connects to a career pathway and that learners are able to have agency and choose the English that they need, we, you know, choose their own adventure, their own career pathway, because adults really learn what they need to learn, what they want to learn. So the more that it aligns with their interests and goals, the more uh, motivated they will be. So I'm gonna pass this over to Jenny so she can talk about some of her work at Emily Griffith. Thank you, Ted. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here with you today. My name is Jenny, and I'm joining you from Emily Griffith Technical College, one of the oldest and largest technical colleges in the state of Colorado. Our language learning program was at the beginning of our founding of our college. Um, it's one of our oldest programs, and our founder, Emily Griffith, her vision is to provide education for all who wish to learn. So that really relates to our topic today and how we're using NGEN at Emily Griffith. Could you go to the next slide, please? Great. So mostly we use NGEN in a program called Vocational Transitions. This is a grant funded program through the state. It's free for all language learners that are preparing for CTE programs at our school. And it's really meant to give them the confidence they need in their English language abilities to be successful in their careers. Another way we use NGEN at our school is for um, refugees and asylees who are unable to attend vocational transitions. They can meet for career coaching one-on-one -on -one with a career navigator and use NGEN in a similar way to prepare for the academic rigor of a CTE program. And then finally, we have it as an alternative for demonstrating readiness for two of our CTE programs. Those programs are computer networking and nurse assisting. Cool, next slide, please. So here's just a little bit of data about NGEN users at Emily Griffith. Um, this comes from 2020 to this April. And um, just looking at the screen, we've had 65 CTE students who have used NGEN in some capacity to prepare for their CTE programs. Uh, the programs are listed there, only seven dropped, 18 are current, and then we've had 10 that have started. Um, these numbers will be updated soon when we start our spring um, enrollment and start dates in January. Tad, can you update or the next slide, please? Cool, so the good news is 
of NGEN users at Emily Griffith have successfully completed their CTE programs. So we're very excited about this. Obviously, many variables and factors go into student success, but my team and I really see a lot of growth in our students that are using NGEN. Um, I also would like to share with you what students have to say about using NGEN. So that's my next and final slide. Um, so just a couple of quotes from NGEN users here at Emily Griffith. You can take a look at those, but really just um, positive feedback overall. I think what stands out to me the most as an instructor is that Engine really allows me to differentiate in my classroom and provide content specific vocabulary that's relevant to our students' lives. And it makes their goals seem closer and more achievable. Um, coming to a new country and starting over, they have so much experience that they bring and then being able to lower this barrier of language and help them get into their CTE programs and then on to their careers. So um, thank you everyone. I look forward to talking to you more in our breakout room. That's all I had. All right, I'll take it from here. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah. Um, so I was very excited to be asked to join this panel. Uh, my name is Grace Davis and I work at um, an education consortium in South Lake Tahoe called Advance. Um, I want to spend most of my time talking about Engine, though, so if you are interested in hearing more about Advance, you can scan that QR code, and that will take you to our retrospective, and it gives a lot of cool um, stories about how we started and some of our um, success stories as well. Uh, so I, I recommend you check that out if you're interested. Um, at Advance, we focus on personalized pathways, which Tad was talking a lot about, and holistic case management. Um, and as a transition navigator, I always say that my goal is to help my clients achieve their goal. Um, and to do that, we talk about Maslow's before Bloom. Um, so a lot of my job feels like um, making sure that we provide wraparound services so that my clients have their basic needs met so then they can focus on their goal, um, which for me usually means they're trying to learn English. Um, Tad, if you can go to the next slide. All right, and then this is a picture also from the retrospective, um, and it says, no matter where you start, where you want to go, or how many stops you need along the way, we can help you map your path to a better future. And so we really do believe that two people can come into advance um, with the exact same goal, but how they achieve that goal and the barriers along the way are going to be unique to that individual. So we are really focused on uh, personalized pathways and holistic case management. Um, Tad, if you want to just click through, I think like four times and I'll talk about everything on this slide. Um, but a big part of my job, I, I believe, is building trust, um, building relationships. So then my clients feel like they can have honest communication with me and tell me why they aren't able to practice their English or um, work on the goal that we're working on. And then the second bullet point here, uh, which is another reason I love that I get to work for Advance. We focus on the goal of the individual, not the goal of the system or the institution. And I feel like so many times um, in previous jobs, I've had to teach to the institution's goals and not the client or the student. Um, so I really appreciate that um, about my current position. Um, and how we do this, we assign each student or client a transition navigator. So like I mentioned, I'm one of the bilingual transition navigators at Advance. There are four of us, um, two bilingual, we speak Spanish. Um, and then the other two, one is college readiness and the other one um, helps our WIOA clients with their unique plan. Um, we use a program called Community Pro Suite to basically track case notes. And that's where we store each individual's um, content or their map for uh, how they're gonna achieve their goal. All right, next slide. And then NGEN. So, um, Engine makes this really easy for us because uh, Engine is all about personalization. So we can um, focus on the career and educational goals of the student, like we've mentioned multiple times today. And then the second point, industry specific modules. Um, a lot of people in South Lake Tahoe work in hospitality, um, housekeeping, healthcare. And I'm going to share a personal story, and I love this story so much, but I actually found Advance because I was a Zoom moderator for my current boss's uh, Zoom room at the Catisal conference back in 2020. So I just hit my four year anniversary. 
and he was presenting on um, how Advance uses Engine, and he was presenting on their ski lift maintenance um, modules that they had just launched. Uh, and after the session, I emailed him, and I was in grad school at the time, and I said, do you do internships? I have to get involved in Engine and Advance, and here we are four years later, uh, part-time job and now full-time job. So I feel like I'm having a full circle moment because now I get to present on how I've been using Engine. Um, next uh, bullet point, Todd, yep. Um, so we can also supplement in-person instruction. We um, support our ESL department at Lake Tahoe Community College. We are actually housed at Lake Tahoe Community College. And just last week, um, a lot of clients, students came to me because they missed the enrollment date for our ESL classes. And rather than having to wait till January now to get into an in-person class, um, we can connect them to NGEN um, and they can meet with me to make sure they're working on their goals um, in between quarters. Um, and also, we don't always have ESL classes that uh, meet the needs of our learners. A lot of them work multiple jobs. Um, I have some people who attend classes in the middle of the night, uh, which is great for them. Um, and so NGEN really makes that possible because um, there are workshops and classes at all times of the day. Uh, next bullet point. Flexible access. Um, I know Cassie was talking a lot about this where um, most people use a mobile phone. I think 95% of my clients are on a phone. Um, and so NGEN has an awesome app that you just download and they can also study while they're at work. So I always try to stress that it's better to practice a little bit each day rather than a big chunk one day a month. So they can practice on their lunch break or when they have um, time that's convenient for them. Uh, the next one, I believe, is workforce readiness um, and workforce preparation. So NGEN has a lot of um, tools for practicing um, applications, interviews, workplace communication. And then the last one, um, this isn't our highest need, but we do have clients who come to us for uh, advanced English. Um, Tad, I think I have one more. Yep. Um, academic English, uh, IELTS prep, TOEFL prep. I had a client come to me last week trying to prep for the Duolingo test. And so we are able to also support um, those students who are pursuing higher education. Okay, next slide. And then I have three examples of these, uh, but this is my takeaway from the professional development series that Tad was um, talking about. Uh, this example was created by Engine and I completely stole it. So they get all the credit for this, but they, um, I, I was trying to do something like this for a long time and this was the push I needed. So I mentioned that I store case notes in Community Pro, but now I'm actually making individualized content mapping plans for all of my clients. Um, and I think Engine's intention was for the program or the administrator teacher to use this. Um, but what I've done is now take this content mapping and the client can just click on, for example, in the top left, pre-beginner literacy, it will take them directly to that course on NGEN. Um, and so this also eliminates some barriers if we're learning, most of my clients are learning digital literacy. Um, so I share all of their content through um, WeChat or WhatsApp, and I'll show you that um, in a second. But they are able then to just follow their map. We meet, um, depending on my client, sometimes I meet every two weeks, sometimes every six or maybe longer. Um, and this is an example of someone who just last week came to me and said, I work in construction. Um, can you help me make a, a plan for how to improve my English um, and eventually move up in that job? And so I said, yeah, absolutely, because Engine already created it. So um, this was a good first example. Uh, Tad, if you move to my second example, this is one for accounting. Uh, Katie Brown talks about this all the time. Uh, we are wasting so much talent in this country because a lot of my clients come here with degrees from their home country, um, but then they can't get a job in that field. Um, and Engine allows them to practice that passion because they can use um, these lessons. So accounting, for example, this person can then study accounting while studying English uh, because English is a skill, not a content area. Engine pushes that a lot too, and I completely agree. Um, and so you can see the path that he can follow for accounting. And then I put and exploration because he said, well, could I switch degrees? <laughs> I was like, yeah, sure, let's uh, switch it up. You can sprinkle in any courses you want to um, as you go. And then part of navigating, we meet, we discuss, and we adapt um, based on how things are going. All right, and then one more, I think I have time. Um, this is just an English test prep example. 
And this student is actually intermediate to advanced. They don't really need the beginner or high beginner. Um, but she recently arrived from China and I could tell that she was just lacking some uh, confidence. And so I said, well, why don't you do the, just review the beginner English. And then I know you'll feel more comfortable because you're gonna breeze through that. And then she also mentioned that she's really struggling with writing. So I plopped in intro to writing. And then she, um, in the middle, you can see TOEFL prep and IELTS prep. And then um, usually we'll end up adapting the plan. It never uh, goes as planned, but it, they have something that they can follow and we can at least um, base our navigation sessions off of these uh, content maps. All right, and then last uh, but not least, this is an ed tech session. So I want to mention how we use tech to communicate. Um, once advanced started helping with uh, ESL enrollment, we increased enrollment by 146% because we stopped communicating via email. <laughs> um, a lot of our clients, we always ask what they would prefer, but this is an example of WeChat. So a lot of my Chinese learners use WeChat. And then um, Tad, you can click twice. I have two examples of WhatsApp. Um, I feel like the ESL world gets it. And a lot of us are implementing uh, WhatsApp and text messaging into our classes. Um, but it doesn't hurt to mention it again. I ask my clients how they prefer. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. <laughs> I ask my clients how they prefer to communicate. Um, and then again, you can see that these are two different clients, but different needs. So the one in the middle is intermediate to advanced clients. So they speak English and they want to practice with me. So I only speak to them in English, even though they're a Spanish speaker. And then the one on the right is a Spanish speaker just starting out and they only want to communicate with me in Spanish for now. So um, I make sure to um, ask them what they prefer. And also please bear with me. I know I'm not using accents and this is not grammatically correct, but I stress that to my students as well, that language is a moving target. So it's okay that your goal is to communicate and you don't have to be perfect. <laughs> um, but yeah, so these are just some examples of um, personalization and um, you can see I'm sending the engine tutorials. I'm sending the engine links for their workshops and um, how to download the app. So everything just goes directly through WhatsApp. And we do use my WhatsApp business. I use that app. Um, so it's separate from my personal number. I use a Google voice number. Um, and then we, this fall, um, the PD session, I had some ideas. I want to start an NGen lab and we have an NGen WhatsApp group where our learners can communicate there and then um, talk about any questions that they have. Um, so I think that's it for advanced NGen. Um, but I, if you have any more questions, please pop into our, our breakout room. Jenny, I think we might be on time if you want to talk a little bit about this slide. Sure. Thank you, Grace. Um, yeah. So Grace and I met and just talked a little bit about our takeaways from the NGEN PD sessions last month. Um, I really liked that Grace showed the content mapping templates. I think that that was a big takeaway for me as well. Um, also in our sessions, it was really helpful to talk about the different ways um, to use NGEN or models. So um, there's many different, you can use it as a class, you can use it with a coach, the flipped classroom, self-paced, um, reporting hours, or how we do in my vocational transitions class, it's typically outside um, self-paced autonomous ESL program, and then we do pull in activities as a group and discuss it frequently as a group together, comparing vocabulary words or doing like a scavenger hunt with their engine accounts. So, um, and then just the final thought that I had is um, it's very useful to use the crosswalk for engine. So um, currently we have two programs uh, that accept engine as a way to enter the program. And we went about that by comparing it to CASAS and other tests along that line.